Hi everyone, welcome to our 100th tutorial on the topic of Python for image processing. We are in the middle of understanding the terminology that goes into deep learning. And we talked about various terms like activation functions, loss functions, dropout, and other uh, terms. But in this video, let's talk about categorical data, which is not you know, technically part of deep learning. Uh, in, the, in the sense, it's not technically part of building a model, but it is a crucial step for pre-processing your data, especially when it comes to uh, multi-class classification. So let's uh, understand what this means, categorical data, and what do you mean by one-heart encoding? So one-heart encoding for categorical data, first of all, let's understand categorical data. Categorical data means anytime you have variables that contain labels rather than numeric values. For example, uh, you get a cat and a dog and so on. I mean, in the last couple of tutorials, we use CIFAR 10 data set, right? So there we have a truck and a car. So how many of those we have? 10. That's why it's called CIFAR 10. So this is categorical data and often categorical data, the number of possible values are limited to a fixed set. So uh, a good example would be organelle class can have mitochondria, lysosome, nucleus, and ribosomes, four classes. So often you have like a bounding box, like for regression problem, you don't have that, right? I mean, it's a continuous value that you can uh, predict. But when it comes to multi-class categorical, you do have a finite number of these classes that you are predicting, uh, you know, uh, your images fall into one of these classes. Now, some algorithms like random forest, we used random forest in the past, they can work with labeled data. They can work with mitochondrial lysosome and nucleus and ribosomes, but many machine learning algorithms require you to convert this into some sort of a numerical value. And there are two ways you can convert them into numerical values. One, integers. And we have done this in one of our random forest tutorials. We converted these into 0, 1, 2, 3, right? That's basically uh, numerical. So integer coding, encoding just converts your labels, whatever those labels, into 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, and so on. Okay, now one hot encoding, this is what we are looking for. This is using categorical encoder. So you use this categorical encoder to convert your input into one hot encoded. Why is it called one hot? Because it indicates the presence of each value as a one and an absence as a zero. What does that mean? Let's actually look at it uh, using an example. Hopefully this makes more sense. For example, this is my data. You have like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And then my organelle here is mitochondria, mitochondria, lysosome, lipids, lysosome, mitochondria, lipids, and lipids. So if you convert that to numerical, it's very easy. Mitochondria is one, one, lysosome is three, lipids is two, or it can be zero, one, two, right? So this is numerical encoding. Categorical encoding is it reorganizes this. So now you have mitochondria, lipids, and lysosome. So look at your first data point. What is it? It's mitochondria. Right? So if you look at your first data set, mitochondria is one, lipids and lysosome is zero. My second data point, same thing, mitochondria one, lipids and lysosome zero. My third data point is lysosome. So the value of, is right there. So my third data point, you see, lysosome is one. This is why it's called one heart encoding because in a given row, only one of the uh, cells has a value of one, everything else is zero. And that one represents what class it belongs to. That's it. I hope that makes sense. And it generates one Boolean column for each category. And only one of these columns could take the value of one like I just defined. OK, so that's a quick definition. Now let's jump into our code that we have been using the last couple of times to get a better, I mean, to get this in action using Python. So let's jump in. OK, so this is the example we have been uh, using. So here are the classes. We have airplane, automobile, bird, cat, deer, dog, frog, horse, ship, and truck. These are the classes we are dealing with. So let's go ahead and import the libraries. And uh, the important libraries here are the CFAR 10 from keras.datasets because this gives us the data to work with. And where is our categorical right there? So as part of keras.utilities, you have something called two categorical two underscore categorical. This converts our numerical or, or uh, uh, classes into categorical. We'll see that in a minute. So let's go ahead and load the data. Again, CFAR 10, you have 50,000 uh, uh, training images and 10,000 testing images, okay? Each 32 by 32 by three. 
So we loaded the whole thing and let's leave everything as is. And if you would like to see a few of those, let's go ahead and plot them. Okay, here it is. And that's obviously a frog and truck, I guess. And uh, we can go ahead and divide our uh, X values, which is our pixel values by 255 to scale them between zero to one. And now let's go ahead and print the Y train values, a random, a few of these, like the zeroth one, the first and the 10th. The zeroth one is a class six, next one is class nine, and 10th one is class four, six, nine, and four, right? What are these? If you go back here, you can kind of see frog, truck, and deer probably, yeah? Six, nine, and uh, uh, six, nine, and four, yeah. These are the three classes, but this, this is not acceptable in terms of our deep learning. It is expecting two categorical Y values. Okay, so how do we do that? It's basically your Y train to categorical Y train. It's as easy as that. So let's go ahead and run this. And when you do that, go ahead and print it. How does the output look like? You see, for six, it's zero, one, two, three, four, five, six. The sixth one is one, everything else is zero. Think of this as uh, it's 0% probability that it is something, 0% probability that it is this, but 100% probability that it is uh, whatever that sixth one is. That's all we are trying to do. The next one is, you see, as you can imagine, the ninth one is one, and the next one, the fourth one, zero, one, two, three, four, right, is one, that's it. This is your categorical, and these Y values directly go into your model when you go ahead and fit the model right here. That's it. And I'm not gonna fit this, we have done this in the last couple of tutorials, but I just wanna quickly show you what categorical is, the, the need for categorical, meaning, after training, when you're doing predictions, your output also has these many, uh, the, uh, the array size of uh, 10 in this case, because we have 10 classes. And what does it represent? It represents because we are using softmax, let's go ahead, because we are using softmax activation function, each position there is going to be a probability of that belonging to that specific class. And we are going to pick the one that has the highest probability using argmax, which will, again, I'm just throwing certain terminology out there so it makes sense when we get to that later on in future. So I hope you found this tutorial to be useful. And in the next video, let's use pretty much the same code to generate a few of these training curves and try to interpret what's going on by looking at the training curve. Is there an overfitting? Is it right? Or what's going on? Okay, so please stay tuned for that video and go ahead and subscribe to this uh, channel because I know you'll find this to be very, very useful and you would like to be notified as soon as we update new videos. Thank you.